Hi guys, welcome again to another episode of Bob of Charts. Today we have got a very interesting diversity panel. And then our topic that we're going to talk about today is going to be social media safety and limitations. We are all on social media. If you're not, then they call you old school. But they never taught us. There is no a rule that you actually have to learn how to behave, what to post and how to actually contact yourself or conduct yourself on social media. But today we are about to dive into something like that, a very interesting topic that everybody indulge into. But now I'm going to introduce our pan panelists. Um, they're going to introduce themselves and they're going to tell us where they are, what they do, what exactly is that gives them the vibe to wake up every morning and say, okay, I'm still alive. Okay, Loveness, I start with you. Can you introduce yourself and, and tell us what makes life very interesting for you? Uh, sorry, you're muted. Um, okay, you are. My, my. Okay, so you can start again. Sorry, you were muted there a little bit. So we can All right. to hear what. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. My name is Lavna Sindhya. I'm a digital marketing strategist and consultant. Um, mm -hmm. I am a mother of two. I am married mm -hmm. to one man. And what makes me wake up in the morning is um, just helping people um, uh, people to be empowered, to take users, whether you're a business, a brand, or just, you know, in your own personal capacity. Oh, OK, OK. So. Mm -hmm. This, this is interesting. I like the part that you always have to mention, the part that I have got a mother of two and married to one man. Uh, <laughs> say, well, anyways, we go to Dennis. Tell us, man. Tell us, man. They are, they are so proud to be to be mother yeah. of two. And, 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 and I'm sure you say the same. <laughs> no, I'm not right now. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Dennis uh, my name is Dennis Jao. Mm -hmm. I'm a Kenyan, mm -hmm. I'm actually a lawyer, but uh, I also run a social media consultancy mm -hmm. where we provide social media solutions for businesses, firms, organizations, and institutions. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm not married just yet, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, I'll be sure to let you know when that but that status changes. Uh, fantastic okay. to be here again. Thanks. <laughs> sure. I I'm waiting for the wedding invitation. But anyways, that's I not a problem. You You're going to be on the <laughs> VIP. Ah, yes. Already. <laughs> OK, Tafaza. Hi. Us. So my name is Tafaza Ritate. Um, I am a finance officer by profession. And what wakes me up every day, I think it's just connecting with my family this time around. These past two years have been great being in quarantine. It's an advantage, I guess. So, yeah, okay. just getting to know each other on that level has been really amazing. And thank you for mm -hmm. having me. Okay, so so I, I like the fact that these two years, the only one that I've had saying that these two years have been great, but okay. <laughs> Depressingly yes. great. Well, I mean, for sure, there was advantage to it that you got to know your family more, especially if you have to stay in the mm. same vicinity, wake up, yeah. work, and do everything in that. But I tell you, you still meet your friends at any given time. And then the only thing, the only way you could actually interact with anyone is actually social media. That's why That's we are right. here. And most people actually spend most of their time now on social media. And they try to express these things or emotions and everything they're feeling through social media because they want to send a message to their friends. But at any given time, mm. we have to have a limit for sure because social media doesn't, yeah. doesn't forget. So, I mean, let's talk yeah. about privacy and data protection. From your own understanding, um, Tafazwa, you, you're the one staying they're enclosed and powerful and everything is really locked out. How do you feel about your privacy and data protection or what do you understand and how do you apply it when you're actually using social media? Do you know what? Sometimes it's it's very easy to get carried away and mm -hmm. like you said, you can just go on your social media and 
some people they just end up expressing themselves mm -hmm. but for me i think i am learning to filter what i say like now i work and my managers they are on social media so i have to filter what i say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's 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 a challenge but for me i believe in not posting anything personal like try okay. to avoid anything personal so yeah i think that's pretty much it Okay, we'll come back to, to the point where you said anything personal and we'll discuss what is personal and what's not personal. But uh, Loveness, what, what do you think? Um, I, I agree with you that um, people needed to connect and, um, you know, there's the social distancing and someone was actually calling it, maybe we need to rephrase it and call it physical distancing and remaining social connected because that's yeah. we are social creatures but i think sometimes mm -hmm. where the issue comes in when you talk about privacy is is what we are sharing some people are over sharing and um yes. we have to be you know i'm always mindful that not everybody has got good intentions about what i share and so because of that i'm more if i have to share something personal um um, it, it has to be something that's really filtered. It has to have a certain goal. Um, and, you know, I'm always mindful of what it could mean to a prospective partner, to a prospective, um, uh, you know, um, client, anybody who would want to work with me or associate with me or want to, you know, even invite me to platforms like this for me to make contributions, you know. So for okay. me, it's it's like we really have to, think about some of those things. Okay. Um, Ms. Dennis, I mean, yeah. um, I know you're a lawyer, but from for this particular time, let's not put you in the shoes of a lawyer. Let's put you in the shoes right. of Dennis. <laughs> what exactly it means? Well, then we start talking about the jargons that I'm just like, okay, yes, this is what we want. All right. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you, Herbert. Well, uh, I had mentioned that I'm also a social media consultant, so I, I'll approach yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, so, uh, not from a legal perspective, but more of a yeah. social media perspective. So I think when we talk about uh, privacy and data protection in social media, uh, we must start on a, on a personal level because mm -hmm. um, it really depends on where you are in the world. Because, uh, so for example, in Europe, we have the general data protection regulations, which yes. go a long way mm -hmm. to protect the rights of uh, social media users and you know generally to protect um, online users in uh, in Europe but uh, for the rest of the world we don't have a lot of uh, regulation so states don't necessarily go a long way to um, protect the privacy and data of individuals so it must begin on a personal level so okay. what I would on perhaps is just uh, to first educate yourself on uh, mm -hmm. the kind of risks that exist there. And I'm sure we'll talk about this later on in the, in the conversation. But I think on a personal level, what you need to do is uh, just have a, have a, have knowledge on the, the kind of data that you share online. Be very careful mm -hmm. about it. Be cautious um, because uh, it's, really on, it's really on you. Uh, so you must take the first step to... to to, to moderate your behavior on, uh, on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, this is what I actually said in the other time that, yes, we understand that social media is there and we really need to be there. But we were not told how to conduct ourselves on social mm. media, no matter how much. Especially the fact that at, at this particular time, the, dif the difficultness of it is you just get thrown into the deep end. And now nobody told you. Okay, you, you just say, you just post this. Okay, you, you don't post this stuff because mm. it has to be an experience. That's when you go like, oh, I was not supposed to post. This. Okay. Uh, but then they've already posted, and someone would have already taken the screenshot and say, yeah. Okay, this is it. okay so but let, let's let, let's come back again. Um, to uh, I'll, I'll come back to you to um, loveness. I mean, let's talk about. Ah, no, to, to Tafazwa. Tafazwa was the one who mentioned about the personal data and what, what, personal. what. But let's yes. talk about personal data. When you talk about personal data in this case, what are you talking about? Are you talking about my pictures? My picture are personal. 
So, yeah, um, for me, when it comes to pictures, I think on social media, because I think at times we tend to just accept any friend request. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to be extra careful, like the people that you accept, because there is a thing called identity theft. So we have to be extra careful when it comes to that. Um, mm -hmm. Posting your home address, it's never a good idea. Okay. Um, I think your financial information, even your phone number, is just those things that can easily be accessible for someone who actually wants to steal your identity and, you know, the Yahoo boys, fraud and so on. So I always avoid posting those things. Okay. I think those are like the personal information the, the that personal I'm talking information. about. Personal information. Yeah. Okay. But, but I mean, so the picture is not personal or I can post my pictures? Do you post pictures on social media? If I do post pictures, so it depends um, what pictures they are because there are some pictures that will come and haunt you back. Okay, <laughs> haunting back uh, because it seems there's social media, they are handers again. But nevertheless, yeah. we, we go back to, to loveness. Uh, what do you think about uh, when you talk about this personal, personal data to you? What does it mean? Um, <laughs> for me, first of all, as a mom, you know, and as a family person, as someone's mm -hmm. sister, and yeah. you know, or something like that, I when I show up on social media, I'm wearing all these hats, and um, for me, something personal is like posting pictures of my kids, and um, I'm I'm really like a bit um, um, reserved about that, although I know some people will post pictures from the child from the time someone is a fetus right up to you know <laughs> every milestone now building this digital footprint and um and yet yes. this is someone's life on a public okay. platform a public for all to yes. see for anyone to access yeah. and that and that really kind of like scares me you know um and i know that some kids now are actually suing their parents to say look i'm a brand and now look at my whole life is there and even if you know i was checking that at the time because i'm I constantly check the terms and conditions of some of the social media platforms that we have. Even if you delete some of the pictures, they'll still be saved on the server. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it's got like, oh my gosh, my son's life is, all of it is on in on the internet. And that's kind of like scary. Or even posting pictures of, of my son in his uniform or child yeah. in their uniform. I, I get and you. all that I get information. You, I get you. Mm -hmm. I get you. I, I'm trying to understand from a perspective that a, a proud yeah. mom who is posting and you telling them not to post. And because you read some terms and conditions that probably they didn't read because there was too long. Long. But I want to come back to 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 yeah. to to, to there, there is someone who posted. I, I'll come back to you, Loveness. I just I know there, there is someone yeah. that Dennis is going to answer to. She said, I don't know whether it's a she or he, but uh, I, I hope I'll say it correctly. But at the end, it's Mwashi, Mwashi or something like that. She says, Can you be catfished mm -hmm. with your pictures? Um, answering the first question, and can you answer this one, Miss Dennis? I mean. Can, can someone catfish you with your with your with your pictures? All right, thank you, Robert. Oh, um, you can you catfish are... with your pictures. Sorry, yes, it was All not right. a question, okay. but it was statement. Yes, indeed. Um, well, I think first of all we need to start by defining what catfishing is. Okay. Um, just for the for the purpose of uh, those who might be yeah. familiar, catfishing actually refers to a situation whereby someone pretends to be someone else by using either photos or videos or um, information or data that can be used um, mm -hmm. to identify someone else. So for example, if I take Hubbard's photo or a bunch of Hubbard's photos and then I, I call myself something else, you know, I might, and then I, you know, I approach someone and try to do business with them, I'm actually catfishing them because I'm, you know, pretending to be Hubbard. I'm pretending to be someone who I'm not. Mm -hmm. Now, your photos can definitely be used to catfish, to catfish you. And uh, this has been done before and continues to be done, especially by okay. scam artists. And, uh, you know, yeah. we've had issues um, all around the world with people even um, getting into online relationships with people who are just pretending to be someone else. So okay. I think um, the best way to, to avoid catfishing is uh, just to do your yeah. 
okay when you're being approached by someone and you know you're making suspicious if this is really them you know go go further perhaps do a video call you know just take extra steps to 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 identify this uh, individual who you're communicating with just to make sure that uh, that you're not being you know catfished and that you're not getting into any kind of situation like that and um uh, you know just, just to answer your your previous question how about on uh, mm-hmm. personal data and what i think that is um i think um the best way to define personal data would be of course in reference to the gdpr which is sort of the, uh, sort of like the golden standard for data protection um so personal data or personal information it is, as it is um, commonly referred to is any information that can be used to identify an individual personally okay so any information that can distinguish you from the next person okay so i'm talking about your perhaps id number you know right driving license number things like that okay any information that can be used to distinguish Hubbard from Tafazo or someone else um yeah that, that that's that's pretty much it thank you okay so so i think i think i get it but okay so so one other thing that i want to talk about when we talk about personal data uh there's a point that uh, lennon actually said he says that from the i mean i think i also come from his background whereby when you travel you want to people to know where you are <laughs> i've made it <laughs> so uh, i really want to check in at some point and go like okay this is where i am uh should i get worried or the first have you done this before or, or do you get worried about this you know like check in i'm here yeah you know? do you know what um i used to do that quite a lot um mm-hmm. like i would go to a restaurant with my friends and i would like you know post him a picture and exactly. i would insert my location and so on no, I, they need to know <laughs> I don't do you know what when it comes to those things I think it's best to not post in that moment whilst you're still in that place maybe when you've removed yourself from that location then you can post the location you were at previously because right now like um someone mentioned before they said not everyone has good intentions on social mm-hmm. media so you can easily have stalkers and you all know that they're a stalker and you posting you are literally exposing yourself so someone can easily come and harm you you don't know what their intentions are so i've learned right now not to post in the moment like i rather just enjoy the moment and then post later on like i was in this location when i've removed myself from it oh, oh okay so 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 i just wanted to 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 just say it that way but okay there's other part that i want to talk about personal data and probably it overlaps to common mistakes and this is i'm i'm not going like i've seen a lot of videos especially of pictures on instagram and and what are, maybe it's based on culture and everything people getting this kind of um explicit where they really become really explicit like okay because they mm-hmm. want the attention because they want the likes because they they want to yeah. really have a lot of things what is the repercussions for this or do they have are they any or is just like no i'm showing what i want because it's my profile <laughs> is there is there something that will come again or it's just like it's normal there's nothing wrong should they get worried or or they shouldn't get worried at all i think people they try to normalize it but i don't think it's normal if it makes sense it will come okay. back to haunt you like um especially when you start looking for a professional job and so on with mm. some companies or organizations even after mm. they've done an interview they will go online just mm. to see what kind of a person you are so okay. when they see those things they start mm. questioning like what kind of a person are you in your character does it align with their policies or you know with whatever brand they are selling so people have to be careful mm. Okay, okay, okay. Loveness, do you, do you do you agree with this? I mean, it's my, you know, my pictures. <laughs> what, 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 who cares? I mean, it's my life. Living the best life. <laughs> I totally agree with Tafadza. I totally agree because the social is not so anymore. And I know that for some people, you know, they've been their influencers to share 
you know, really personal stuff and, and everything. But if I were to tell you that I've, I've, I've done online background check for companies considering people and, you know, um, before it used to be about the CV only CV, you show yeah. up nicely and that's all they had to go on. But things have just changed. And the other part emotionally is if I show too much, if I, you know, be so expressive, like, you know, literally, and there's, there's a certain type of people that I, I attract. And, you know, usually this type of people, they are so crass. They, um, they can't just say, that's where you get bullies. That's where you get trolls. That's where you get people body shaming. All these mm -hmm. other things that come and then later on they're saying that um i feel victimized i feel this way and i don't know whether we can say it's cultural or anything like that but i think it's really important for your own self image and where you want to go to always be consider consider what what type of personal brand you want to have i like even at a say. very it's personal level yes i get it i like what you say but interacting with with a lot of young people Okay, I'm also young, but they're the younger ones before me. But <laughs> interacting with, with those ones, they, they literally tell you that they you you're still in the old school. You need to grow up. You need to yeah. no, you need to, to yeah. adjust with the modern world because you need to adjust to that point. So whatever that you're saying that they are victimizing me, people are also are also old school. And no matter how much you try to do this message to them, it might not really make sense. But this is where we are now, right? Dennis, what do you think, or what, what, how can you, what do you think about this? How can you tell someone th whatever points that these guys are making, if you agree to them, to say, okay, you are All talking right. to someone very young, that, okay, this can't work. All right, all right. Well, um, I'm going to start by being the devil's advocate here. By, okay. By saying, yes. uh, where do you go the line? I mean, why should um, an employer be concerned about your, your personal life? You know, to such an extent, is it sort of uh, an invasion of privacy? Why, if I, if I want to employ you, how about why would, would I really care about where you were last week on social media and what you are doing? Now, another perspective to look at this is that um, what the employer thinks is that um, once they employ you, you become a representative of the company, and um, you know, yes. everywhere you go, everything yes. you do. Um, people see you not just as being an individual and loveless, they see you as loveless yeah. for us to start a company. Okay, so if you're going um, on social media and probably yeah. just um, wilding yeah. out or doing something that is, um, you know, not uh, quite um, moral or you know, questionable, right? Um, they might associate you or uh, the company in, they might, they might paint the company in a certain way. So, this is the reason why um, employers have uh, have uh, been a bit cautious. Although I think um, personally that uh, it shouldn't be, you know, such a thing because, um, you know, to some extent it's quite invasive, you know, it's quite invasive mm -hmm. because um, you realize that um, we need to draw a line. At some point we need to draw a line, okay? So that, um, you know, what you do in your personal life is your behavior. Okay? Sort of like when you leave work at the end of the day, right? You're no longer representing the company. Or are you? You technically Okay. Are. So so, so yeah. it depends what you do. Um it depends what you do. I, I would agree with you to a certain extent, but then it also depends with what you do. Some some people where they work, uh no matter whether you are in uniform or not, it's it's just you you're a judge, whether you are with uniform or not. You still a judge. Yes. If you do commit a crime, you still remain a judge, <laughs> whether you well, I mean, in I mean, the office or not. I think then the newspaper will say a judge stole something, even if you were not in the uniform. But, but <laughs> I want to say something that, that Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Masoto, um, sorry, Lisa Masitoko says. Okay, social media check is almost on the same level as security check. Um, this is how how important it has become and sometimes i think companies will probably drill down the kind of person you are not necessarily that they're going to legally say but they want to see what kind of person yeah. you you yeah. have like, yeah sheer may of what you're posting or where you are what you have been and and all, right. all up to okay okay so sometimes they don't want that kind of let's say mm. it's it's, it's um, 
maybe the company company's perspective is dependent on who they employ or their money is dependent or maybe you are doing caring for some people so they have to kind of do this kind of stuff but anyways i don't want to draw much on on, on that but let's go back to, mm-hmm. to, to mm-hmm. Yeah. conversation we talk about common mistakes one common mistake that i have really noticed myself is instant gratification is usually a problem on 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 that leads to a lot of problems and common mistakes on social media um but but i don't want you to do to to, to focus on that specifically but i want you to tell me mm-hmm. what yeah. were common mistakes or what you have done or maybe what you know have been done um i mean Tafazo, tell us uh what have you done in these great two no i'm just not limiting you, <laughs> these two years of your life the past two years <laughs> Um, I think some of the common mistakes on social media will probably be things that I like on social media. And personally, I'm quite aware of like what I like or what I retweet. Um, but I think I've noticed a couple of people, like um, we were mentioning before, um, you being a representative of a company or a certain brand, I've noticed or I've come across like certain brand ambassadors liking things that contradict the brand that they are selling. And it becomes very damaging to that brand, not just the person who liked or retweeted, but it actually becomes very damaging to the brand because you're contradicting what the brand stands for. So it's those common things. Or even, I think, your location is, or it just becomes a common mistake. Like, we, we don't really think mm-hmm. that much into it. Just like, I, you know, I'm just posting my location. It's nothing serious. It's not that deep. But it is that deep. It will become that deep. <laughs> So, so in a nutshell, let, let me let me try to put it this way, in, in something that maybe I would understand or some other person would understand. Let's say a pastor posting a location that is some some club, maybe maybe it might be too extreme, but this is more or less a very good example. Of what yeah. Saying. Okay. So this is one of the common mistakes, but I want the common common mistakes where I'm not a brand ambassador. I'm just happy. I don't represent anything. I don't really care about any brand or whatever. But what could be my common mistakes? Love me. Um, I think, do you know what? what? I think, yeah, I think on that, like a common mistake would be just trusting any link. Um, because there are quite a lot of fraudsters nowadays. So sometimes you can easily open a link and you're thinking, oh, it's from my bank or it's from my friend. And they can mm-hmm. easily hack into your phone or your laptop. So mm-hmm. those are the common, like we don't really think, you just think, oh, it's from a friend. So I can easily trust that link. And you open it and your things get hacked. So um, I have done it before. So okay. I've learned from my mistakes. Okay, okay. Trust the link. Don't... So how okay, but we don't want to do down okay into that. Yeah. But uh, loveness, um, what, what okay? She she, she we've lost loveness a little bit. Um, Dennis, can, can you tell me about the common mistakes that people can can or you have done or what people okay. have interrupted with you have actually All right. done? All right, thank you. Um, well, I think one of uh, the common mistakes, the most common mistake to the average person, is. Um, mm putting everything on social media, not not giving it much thought of what, what you put on social okay. media. I think that's what I mentioned that um, some photos come back to bite you in the future. Um, I think the same way that even in your life, uh, you don't tell everyone everything. Um, the same way you should moderate yourself on social media. Again, uh, social media is just a reflection of uh, what we are and what we do in life. So um, just give it some thought, I think, before you post something. If you think it's okay, then by all means do it. Uh, but I think what I would emphasize on is just um, just giving it some thought because we tend to put um, you know, a lot a lot on social media. Um, of course, you know we all have um, opinions that might be a bit controversial, and um, you know depending on who you are, you know outside social media, sort of in real life, uh, you might need to to be careful about that you know so um i just okay. think one of 
common mistakes is just putting everything putting everything out on you know? everything on, on social media so so we need yes. to be selective but but at any given time mm -hmm. uh, some people say it's my life i do what i want but okay right. that's very important um loveness uh, what what do you think uh, we should we should what could be the common mistakes that people have met um i don't know whether she's still with us so Loveness, can you hear me Okay, so I, I think I'm, um, we've lost loveness there. Okay, so we have all talked about the common mistakes, and then at the at the, at the beginning of this con the, the the topic of common mistakes, Tafata, you mentioned something about being scammed, about like clicking on a link and and yeah. being phishing. So I want to introduce things like um, sc scamming and and phishing. So at any given time, what do you understand from your own perspective with respect to? What does it mean to say someone has been scammed or actually there was some phishing happening? Um, okay, so not when you come... Not a textbook uh, definition, <laughs> eh? What do you understand as an individual? Yeah, so I think when it comes to scamming, um, I think it's when an individual, a group of people, they create maybe a fake website to extort mm -hmm. money from people. Mm -hmm. um, one example would be, I think a few years ago, um, my parents, they wanted to get a car um, mm -hmm. and send it to Zimbabwe. So they were just browsing online and we came across a website. It, it looked very legit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we were too trusting because we didn't read the reviews or, you know, things like yeah. that. But they had like, you know, a landline and so on, a website. And we actually send the money to them. We actually bought the car only for them two, three days later. We finished the website. We tried contacting them. We couldn't get through to them. So it's it's things like that okay. that okay. I would define scamming. Okay, okay. But on a social media context, for sure, I don't have to go to a website. But I'm on social media. How can I be scammed? Uh, on social media, I think even an individual, it, I think it kind of connects with catfishing. Yeah. Because someone can easily approach you looking like someone and they'll, they'll tell you, oh, I'm selling or even just interacting with you. And we get so comfortable that we start sharing our personal information that they can later on use against us. Not everyone who's on social media is your friend. I think okay. that's one thing that I've learned, like just learn to separate, like, okay, we can have a conversation, whether it's politics or whatever, whatever but when it comes to personal information, you don't know, just okay. share it with anyone yeah, that you don't know personally. Okay. So, so there's something that uh, Talento actually said here. He says, one of the biggest, one of the most common mistake is not looking at the big, big bigger picture. But I, I, I understand what I, I would like to understand what he says, but I don't know whether I've got a smaller picture to get the big picture, which okay. smaller picture I'm looking into. But anyways, <laughs> I think Talento, you, 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 you tell me more about this because I really want, I'm interested in your comment, but I'm just trying to understand which small picture I'm looking at at the moment. But anyways, so Mr. Dennis, so tell me, I mean, you, you have, you, you, you're a lawyer, okay? Probably you've actually yeah. dealt with such kind of maybe crimes or maybe you've, read about it studied about them what are the common scams and phishing that are actually happening at this particular time all right um well uh i'll start by, by this i actually know someone a friend of mine he's probably even watching mm -hmm. um who mm -hmm. got scammed uh, quite recently uh on yeah. social media um mm -hmm. sort of like the same way that uh, as said whereby we you know he had he found a page that was uh, passing off as, um, as a business. We were mm -hmm. selling phones, right? So mm -hmm. uh, my friend um, bought the phone, or, or rather sent mm -hmm. money to purchase the, the phone, and then he never got it, right? It was a scam, right? Yeah. Once okay. the, the, the company or the individual received the funds, they, they never came through. So I think uh, what I would advise on this is that the rule of thumb is caution. Check, double check, triple check, OK? You need to be very careful about such things, right? Um, for example, especially if you want to do online purchases, um, mm -hmm. this is something that is becoming more, and, you know, more yes. and more mainstream. It's it's very common nowadays for me to, okay. you know, to import things from abroad. You need to check reviews, 
you know, ask around if you can. Just, you know, do your own due diligence, okay? Be very cautious about this so that, you know, you only purchase from trusted or trustworthy sales or, you know, organizations. Um, really, the rule of thumb is caution. So always do yes, your due diligence before you um, before you attempt to undertake any transaction, before, yeah, anything that, that, that you might feel, um, you know, that, that okay. will come back to you. Yeah. Be cautious. So, so, so I, I need to I need to Lovness, can you hear me? Okay, we lost it again. I think she's having issues with it, with her internet. Yes, I, I I get the part where we, we all talk about cautiousness and try to do due diligence and what what. But you need to be some kind of a techie savvy to do that. It's it's like we're talking in an African context here. We we're not talking in in, in, in everybody using the internet. Probably someone created the social media account for me. So how do you want me to do this kind of stuff? I don't have no idea what, how I can actually verify this. Because you say it's, it's a link that actually looks very real. Legit. Yeah. And, and we're not talking about, we're talking about uh, the, how do I do this kind of stuff? Because if you don't trust the link, okay, is there somewhere where I go like, this is trusted links. When it's like this, don't trust it. There was never a textbook. Like I said, we were all drawn into the deep end. So yeah. how do I do this kind of stuff? I am just a person. I just all think that everybody is nice you know, on, on social media. Right. Yes, I've heard about scams. But how do I do that? As just a normal guy in the street who bought a phone two, three months or two years ago. I like Facebook, but I am also learning how to use even Facebook. Yeah. This is the context of African context. So, But how do I do this cautiously? Oh. Okay, well, um, uh, okay, I'll just take that. Um, here's the thing. Unfortunately, the way the way things work is that um, mm -hmm. things happen, and then sort of like uh, the law reacts to things happening. So, for example, okay. we had uh, the onset of social media, and mm -hmm. you know it moved very fast. And unfortunately, the okay. law doesn't move as fast to protect okay. people or you know pr protect you even as an individual against such things. Mm -hmm. So it will take okay. time. But it will get there eventually. But it's already happening. Where, for example, we we, we have um, verification checks, uh, you know, mm -hmm. whereby, for example, uh, on uh, social media, maybe Facebook or Instagram, you normally see a bit of a tick. For example, if okay. it is a big organization or something like that. So I'm okay. sure in future, once um, these social media companies um, are able to verify all businesses, uh, because you know all businesses moving online. If, it is not already there. But yes, but for now, I, I, I just I just want to, right. to, to catch loveness before before she disappears. Okay, okay. Sure. She's disappearing. <laughs> but, uh, let's hope she's not going to disappear again, but uh, she has been disappearing. So loveness, we've been talking about the common mistakes that actually people do, and mm -hmm. then this comes and fishing. Yeah. In your own context, can you talk about these two main important things, about what is the common mistakes that people do mm. and actually this comes in the fishing that actually happens in the context where you live or be it happening to you or actually um uh, has happened from maybe from a different perspective yeah my apologies my connectivity is bad today it's just misbehaving um but i think yeah. it's very important is that uh, whenever you're online just always just don't do what you wouldn't do physically. You know, would you would you just accept someone as a friend? Um, you don't know them, you don't check them out. Would you just share everything? Would you just trust somebody without doing any background checks? So I think it's so so important for if if you want to introduce yourself to me, I check your profile. What do you like? How, how how do I we have to see if there's common ground or if I want to purchase something? Um, now it it. It wasn't always like that. I like what you're saying, Herbert. No one taught us these things. There is no manual. Yes. We just sometimes we learn the hard way, and and sometimes people actually want to, like even go into these weird sites. You get to that weird site, and then after that you're hacked. And now people are do you know people catch you in a compromising manner because your camera was on, and then they hold your ransom and say if you don't send us any money sharing this yeah. with everybody you know you're in a compromising situation so i think it's very important you don't just go anywhere online don't just trust everybody um try and 
Okay. Um, like I said, she keeps disappearing, but she has very valid points. Hey, Kevin. Kelvin Manza. Hi, my friend from Kenya. I see you are shouting us out from there. Uh, it's, thank you for supporting us. Uh, but, but so now, now we want to go to, to the port where probably Loveness actually said, um, the do's, uh, the do's and don'ts. But she said something very important that I actually catched there. Just in that me, the, the few minutes that she has been online, she said that just don't do something that you don't wouldn't do in the physical. Okay, but there's a conflict here. In the physical, I don't, I don't need likes. I don't need many followers. That's very true. Be because if I have to do that, do the screening, then I won't have a million followers. Then this is a problem. Because I like the instant gratification that if I post a picture from a million likes. followers, for sure I will get some, uh, you know. If I post a picture and nobody comments, I get hit because nobody said anything. Mm. Maybe there's something wrong with me. <laughs> but how do I balance this kind of thing? I mean, this is true for everyone, I guess. Maybe I'm, I'm brushing everybody with the same pain, but. I'm just saying this is more common for a, more, almost everyone on, on social media. They want to post a picture so that some people say something, whether it's bad or not, but at least they should say something. But if I've got five people, maybe they haven't seen the picture in two hours and I still need a like, and this can affect me as well. But what would be the do's and don'ts? And, and, and at the end of the day, people start doing other things that they wouldn't do or like they become more explicit so that they can get attention from people. Um, that can be one of them. I'm not saying that that's all what people do, but what would be the do's and don'ts that you would actually tell people Tafazwa, on, on, on social media? Um, I think on social media, the do's and don'ts, I would want to let people know it's, like you mentioned before, um, I think we live in a world where likes and retweets, it's, you know, it's like the main thing. If you're on Twitter, if you're not getting a certain amount of likes or retweets, if you, you, you know, you became irrelevant some sort. Yeah. Um, I think when, when you focus mostly on what people want or what everyone is doing, that's when we lose it. Sometimes you just need to be content with what you have. Even if you have 10 followers and you get two likes, so be it that that should be enough because at the end of the day it's not about likes and retweets as much as it is that because everyone posts for likes i think to a certain extent but i think yeah just being comfortable with who you are and what you have don't focus on what everyone is doing or what they're doing or what they're saying because the moment you start doing that you are not living for yourself, you're living for other people, so you constantly find ways to get more likes or to get attention, and that's when we tend to do stupid things because you want your page to grow. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. Maybe, I think it depends on, on, because some people actually create these professional pages where they actually do it for the likes and what so the likes, yeah. brand ambassadors. I think the other way will be probably to just create your personal account that has two likes. Okay, this is you being personal with with your with, with your friends with whatever. Yeah. And then you've got another account that you know this is a professional account. I behave and send a message according to what my account is necessarily supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I think this might actually help because to be very honest, I'm trying to think of my other friends, of my, my, my siblings and sisters. When you talk about it's not about the likes and be content with two likes, okay, just kill them. Okay, but do you know what? When you say, I think even separating your personal account and your professional account, I think we need to always remember as well that your friends, they have friends too. So you might post something just thinking, oh, it's for my friends only but they will take a screenshot and it goes beyond. Even if you then later on retract and delete whatever statement or pic post picture you posted, it's already out there. Like you said before, the internet doesn't forget. Yeah, it doesn't for sure. It, okay, it so doesn't forget. To be, to be diligent. Uh, Loveness, before you disappear, Dennis, I'm coming back to you. We, we just want Loveness while she's here. You can continue and then talk about the do's and don'ts that, that you would want to advise people to, to not to do or what they could do.
Yeah, um, from a very personal level is to just be mindful of who you are. Never forget who you are. And um, know that, you know, even if don't go after the vanity matrix, what we call the vanity matrix are uh, the likes, you know, it's not worth yeah. it. Because sometimes if if you just post something just to be, just to be and, you know, there's a false sense of success, or you know adoration for people who are like to are more for but I think the key thing is to be authentic. And what has happened um, from experience is when someone reaches out to me and and I do not accept their <laughs> their their friend request and then later on I meet them, I realize who they online and who they are and then are two totally different things. There's like some sort of and you know who online person now with social media and the tech world is an extension is extended on social media which is why people would judge from your social media um that's all we have to go on and really i know some people will say in vain or privacy but anything that you do in public is for public consumption and um, when i'm doing online background checks i do ethical checking i don't try and then trap someone to be my friend so that i can dig more information no i actually use ethical way finding out what to do and sometimes that you know there's a you know there's an age gap generation gap when someone says you know what i can fully express who i am and i can post whatever i want but the truth is it will bite you it will bite you i can Name celebrities who've had to lose contracts with something that they did personally. Um, a celebrity who cheated on wife, and then the the wife post social media. They lost their contract. And it was suspended. And it's heartbreaking. Um, sometimes about it much now, but it's going to come back. So I think, and some of the common mistakes is don't trust everybody. Yeah. Okay, so so we, we're kind of having difficult to to, uh, to to hear you, but I get you. She was saying that um, some people lose contracts because of what something that they've done personally. Um, um, I think we'll get more of this later. But I want you to, to, to read this comment. I think it's one of those do's. And that actually goes in, in line with Dennis. And, and, and I think after reading this one, Dennis, you can give us a parting shot and then we can run down. So what, what I think is, what this person says, um, again, it's Sipi Mashi. Uh, she says, you, you have to remain vigilant always. Verifying all the available information, performing your due diligence, you can spot scams from a, a mile away. Trust after verification. But yes, like I said before, I agree with all these points, but trust me, when we are talking in the African context, it gets a little bit tricky because computers themselves, or a phone itself is very difficult to operate for someone, and then you want them to verify. This is very, very difficult because they don't even know their password. It was saved on their phone. Otherwise, if they lose the phone, they don't know how to log in again. Um, this could be a context that probably we need to look into. But for sure, if you're able to verify and validate and say this is uh, not correct, then please do. Um, Janice, what would be your, your conclusion to this? What would you want to tell the world? Um, I know you're running something like that. Tell us about what you're running, what you're doing, what you're advising people, and how they can contact you if they need help, like this verification. I think you can help with that. Um, I mean, tell us what, how they can contact you, what you can do for them, and what you're offering. Fantastic, thank you, Herbert. So, um, just to touch on um, the do's and don'ts, uh, say it this way. So, do educate yourself, do familiarize yourself with uh, social uh, media platforms out there, do familiarize yourself with their purpose. For example, you wouldn't really post um, videos that you would post on TikTok or LinkedIn, right? Because that's, uh, that's a professional site, right? So do familiarize yourself with um, these social networks. Um, do familiarize yourself with the risks as well. A bit of research goes a long way. Ask around, talk to people, do your Google searches, all right? Now, don't accept all requests, okay? You need to do a background check, check on the person. Most of these um, accounts could be bots, whereby there's really no one in the background, okay? So always do a background check. 
um, don't post for likes. I know we all like our likes. We, we all like to get that validation. We all like that um, rush of dopamine. All right, but uh, you need to. You know, before you go, what, what should I post for? Uh, before you go, what should I post for? I, I, I don't post for likes, but what should I post right. for then? Okay, what you need to post for is, um, <laughs> I suppose, you know, we all have a, a, a reason, right? But you need to post something that is um, meaningful, okay? So that there's a, there's a deeper meaning than just likes, of course, right? However, if you are posting for likes, then, you know, uh, make sure that it's, uh, it's uh, it will probably earn you some money in some way, okay? The name mm-hmm. is to not be vain about this, about um, being on social media. Right. Um, if you need validation, probably start with yourself. You need, um, right? uh, now, I, I run a, a social media consultancy where we provide social media solutions. And uh, one of the programs that we have is um, on education. So we, we do talk to teenagers, we do talk to parents about the risks that um, their kids are exposed to. And, you know, just to, to, to put the knowledge, you know, and give them the power. Because all teenagers right now are on social media, okay? The average teenager is probably on Instagram or TikTok, and uh, they are at great risk, okay? There's a lot mm-hmm. of risks out there. So one of the programs that we have uh, is on a, uh, we talk to parents, especially, uh, you know, just so that they, they can familiarize themselves with social media so that they can be able to guide their kids properly. And uh, we also talk to teens, especially, just so as they use social media, they can, um, you know, they, they, they can know the risks that they're exposing themselves to and also the benefits. I mean, it's not all, it's not all gloom. Yeah, social media actually does have a lot of benefits and it's a great place um, for networking. All right. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Right, right. So, so I, I wish I could be to could be there in Kenya and just attend it and and really understand. But you're doing really a fantastic job, especially yeah. when you have to well, teach if, them young. If, if you would like to, if you, if you would like a, a session, or you can talk to me on LinkedIn. I am on LinkedIn. Okay. I go by Nja uh, Njoroge. That is N J A U N J O R O G E. Nja Njoroge. Okay. I would be happy to talk to anyone and uh, provide social media solutions for everyone. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I sure. think sorry. Um, I think I would just to add um, two more points there. I think um, we need to normalize just spring cleaning your social media. Um, with me, I think a few months ago, I actually went through my Facebook. Um, because I've had my Facebook for pretty much close to eight, ten years. And before, I used to just accept any friend request. Someone would send me a friend request, and I would just accept it. But it got to a point where I had like loads of people that I didn't know and the content that I was seeing, it was very depressing or it was very, you know, negative. So I think we need to normalize just spring cleaning your social media, like go through your contacts whenever you're free and delete, block, you know, certain people that just doesn't bring good energy around you. I think that that's like one of the most important things that you can do on social media. Okay, so 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 that's 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 your conclusion. Okay, it's it's very unfortunate that we don't have loveness to give us her words of wisdom to the world. But uh, I'm sure she has something very great. But we'll try to 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 get her and probably write on our social media pages or to record her um her last messages. But yes, thanks Yannick for for saying that's a very great conversation. Yes, we hope it actually helped someone. Um, thank you guys for, for, for availing yourself and to give us this information that you've actually availed to us. It was very um, interactive, very interesting. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the comments and for interacting. Next week, we're going to be here again talking about something different, something always exciting. Please do tune in and um, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.